Good morning. We continue looking at 1 Corinthians 7 today. Uh, Paul is talking about our relationships with each other as husband and wife, as, as uh, maybe engaged couples, a, a, and as single individuals. But he's, he's talking in this last part of chapter 7, maybe not so much about our relationships with each other, but our relationship with God. Uh, verse 20 where we start, excuse me. Verse 20 where we start today says, let each of you remain in the condition in which you were called. And we, we need to remember that this was written to first century uh, people in Corinth. They were uh, new believers in Jesus. They were Jewish people, the majority of them, uh, early converts to Christianity. And, and Paul is saying to them, you don't need to change who you are or your marital status or your position as being a slave, a servant, a free person or whatever now that you've come to know God. You, you, I mean, now that, I mean, this is you know, the condition in which you were called is the life that you were living when you became a believer in Jesus it is very much of what Paul is saying here. And you know, he says, were you a slave when called? Don't be concerned about it. You know, if you can gain your freedom, well, that's fine. Uh, and he says, whoever was called in the name of the Lord as a slave is a free person belonging to the Lord. I mean, we, our position on this earth, our, you know, whether we're the king of whatever or the, you know, the male, female, married, unmarried, widowed, you know, whatever, I mean, we are the Lord's. I mean, this is this is what he's saying. You know, just as, you know, whoever was free when you were called is now a slave of Christ. I mean, we, you know, he's he's putting, I don't know, a, a different spin on things. Or just reminding people that you're putting Jesus first, putting God first, living for God rather than living for our own human desires so much is what's important. And that's what's so hard. I mean... To be able to really put God as number one, to put Jesus as as first, and and we need to remember too that Paul was writing this at a time when uh, they were all expecting that Jesus could return any day, and I guess we still expect that, sorta. I mean, how many of you think that maybe Jesus is coming today? I mean, how many of you have had that thought today? Uh, most likely not too many of us, because we've been waiting and watching for over two thousand years. And, and maybe when Jesus made that comment that many of you will not pass away before you see the glory of the Lord was meaning that, you know, a lot of those people saw Jesus resurrected and living on this earth in those, in those 50 days before he ascended back into heaven again. Maybe that was a little bit of Jesus' reference to, you know, that, that made them believe, think, teach, you know, be aware that Jesus was, his return was imminent. And, and in today's society, you know, we, you, you might, we don't so many, so often to see a sign, you know, so somebody holding up, you know, Jesus is coming soon, you know, or, um, and we don't have a lot of people that are uh, predicting Jesus' return, you know, imminently, but yet it's going to happen sometime. And the biggest thing is, is that we're ready in our hearts for it, that we, you know, that we believe that Jesus has forgiven us, that we, that we are slaves to Christ. We are bound to Christ and, and bound in the fashion and in the reality that, you know, he's the one that died for us. He's the one that our sins are forgiven in. He is the one that God promises us eternal life and salvation through. And verse 23, Paul says that. He says, you were bought with a price. So don't become the slave of human masters. You know, don't, and human masters may mean another person, or it may be a, I mean, it might mean a human desire. It might mean that we, you know, rather than focusing on God and remembering, I mean, that we are gods and that God has saved us, you know, we, we strive too much for something else. You know, don't become a slave of, of human desire, of, of, of anything here on this earth, but remember that we are freed in Jesus Christ and we are, 
right? You know, it's, it's hard to say we are slaves to Christ I mean, because we don't want to be slaves. And that's what the Jewish people said to Jesus. We've never been slaves. What are you talking about? Well, they forgot about so many different years and so many different times that they were slaves. But uh, in verse 24, he says, in whatever condition you were called, remain with God. It's just kind of, he's saying the same thing he said in verse 20 again, a little bit differently, but stating it again that, we don't need to change who we are. We don't need to rush into something, you know, and, and, you know, he's talked about, you know, if, you know, if you're single, you know, remain single, you know, as, you know, like I am or whatever, but, but it's a reminder, it, you know, if you're married, stay married, treat your spouse the way, right way. If you are engaged, you know, well, go ahead and go ahead with the wedding, you know, but don't, don't become, don't think you have to change to come to God. I mean, we come to God as we are, and, and then we hope that there would be a change that would come about in us. I mean, when someone comes to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, the, the hope would be that, that this person would, would undergo some change because of that. But we don't have to change before we come to Jesus, because we all come to Jesus as sinners. And then in verses 25 through 35, again, he's He's talking about, he says, you know, concerning virgins or concerning marriage and concerning this. Are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be free. If you were bound to a man, you know, and, um, you know, he, he's just talking about these marriage relations again, you know, to to live them out as they are. And, and then he, he says, you know, don't worry about seeking a wife. Don't seek to free from a wife. But, you know, if you marry, don't be a sin, you know, and. I mean, you know, he's just reminding us to to live our lives in the purest fashion that we can, to remain um, who we are. And um, it's a lot of, you know, kind of hard stuff in here, you know. And, and then, you know, in verse 32, he says, I want you to be free from anxieties, you know, and... And, you know, and then he talks about how the unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, but a married man is more worried about the affairs of the world and how to please his wife. And just because we're married doesn't mean that we think, we have to think more about worldly affairs than God. I mean, we, we, we find that balance, you know, and, and, and he, he, he kind of comes to that, you know, and, and he talks about, about all of this stuff, but first and foremost, we need to remember that we were bought at a price by Jesus Christ. We don't need to change who we are to come to God. We come to God as we are. Um, he talks about, you know, proper behavior toward your fiance and, and toward your, I mean, it's, it's just advice as to how to live your life as best you can. And, and um, he, he goes on quite a bit about that, you know. You know, he talks about how, in verse 39, he says, a wife is bound to her husband as long as the husband lives, but if the husband dies, she's free to marry whoever she wishes. Um, and then he says, only in the Lord, reminding us that, you know, that, that our marriage should be consecrated before God. Now, and, and I don't know if I should say consecrated, but... You know, blessed by God, and that's what we do at a wedding. You know, we we come and we ask God's blessing upon upon this union of husband and wife. We don't, as most of us uh, Protestant Christians, don't treat marriage as a sacrament, uh, but yet it you know, but yet it's something special, something holy in in that. And you know that you know God and Jesus say that you know in marriage the two become one flesh. So we we, measure, we we marry in the Lord. We ask the Lord's blessing upon upon our unions that way, and and live together. Um, and so I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that you know we we can we kind of can kind of look at and say, well, that how does that really pertain to today? You know, and you know some of it seems to be kind of picky details, and some of it's kind of you know, wishy-washy. Well, I don't know if it's wishy-washy, but, you know, in today's society, you know, it's it's just not going to fly for us to start talking and, and teaching and preaching a lot of this that Paul is talking about. 
But one thing we need to remember is that Paul, just like you and me, are expecting the return of Jesus. We have become a little bit more complacent about the return of Jesus. And we may believe in Jesus, we may trust in Jesus, we may know God and trust in God, but we're not living quite under the, the umbrella of, of God coming back again soon in Jesus Christ. We've, you know, we talk about that. And, and you know, if you, you, you talk about the second return of Jesus, you know, to somebody, you know, and it's just, you know, they, yeah, well, whatever, you know, it's going to happen, but, you know, I'll probably never see it. Well, we, we don't know when it will be. And so, so this is a reminder to us to remember that we have been bought with a price, that we don't need to change who we are before we come to God, but that when we come to God, or when someone comes to God to, to believe and to trust in Jesus after not having known them, that hopefully a change will come over them. But we don't need to change who we are before we come to God. You know, we, and this is one of the things that, that we all need to remember. And we all need to rejoice when someone, maybe that hasn't been at worship for a while, comes. Or someone asks a question about God and you wonder, ah, how do I answer that? You know, well, the best we can in Christian love. And that's what Paul is doing. He's reaching out to the people of Corinth in Christian love. And that's what God does every day, reaches out to us in love.